Okay, in today's video we're going to take a look at how to run your RV off of an inverter. So this fan has a 2000 watt inverter, which is fairly significant. It's able to put out uh, 20 amps AC, I believe. So, what you do is, you make a, uh, a circuit coming off the inverter, 20 amp cord, and then you plug it into your camper. That's a 30 amp there. So you need to use an adapter you just heard the microwave turn on. So we'll go take a look inside how this is set up. So I'd struggled for quite a while thinking about putting in a transfer switch or something. But in the end, that just running a cord off of the sorry to turn off the camera power. So anyway, running a cord off of the GFI down here. All you need to do, and then there's just a little hole there. You have a mice mouse problem, you probably want to fill it in with some steel wool or something. And the battery charger. Ha! Ah, so the battery charger right now is running off the inverter. So you don't want that to happen. You'll need to turn off your charger. Otherwise you are wasting batteries. Because you can't make a perpetual motion machine using this equipment. Maybe there's another way, but not like that. Let's take a look at the display on the inverter. So there's about seven watts of power being drawn in the van. So run the microwave. I don't know if the fridge has anything going on or not. There's a few lights in the uh, GFI receptacles. So you got about seven watts of power or uh, parasitic load. So we'll just turn on the uh, microwave. Put it on 30 seconds. Here the fan's slowing down a little bit. We're drawing 1100 watts there by the looks of it. It's going to run it for 30 seconds and we'll take a peek at what the rating is on the microwave. You can see the microwave is plugged in just to the uh, normal receptacle in the van. It's supposed to be running regular shore power. Take a look at this thing. Not immediately apparent how many watts it is. Probably a, a thousand watt unit. Well, usually it's easier to find a spot to see what the power consumption is on something. So anyway, just wanted to show you that. It's just kind of a, a simple way of doing things without getting too complicated. You just need to use a proper size cable. And I like this too because the uh, receptacle on the inverter has a GFI protection. If you hardwired that cable into the inverter, which is possible, you wouldn't have GFI protection on the van. Unless all your receptacles are GFI, which I had converted, so I got double GFI protection. But it's something to consider depending where you run that cord out into the real world. You've got your inverter bonded to the chassis. This so you got. On this one, it's got very big cables because it's a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. So, anyway, happy to provide a, a simple solution. And we'll take a look at another uh, inverter I've got with the other coach. The transfer switch in this unit this is the AC input, which I think is normally feeding the receptacle whenever you're on utility. And then uh, the other source for the transfer switch is uh, the DC which it's uh, in the inverter. So if you wanted to feed uh, the entire vehicle, you'd have to do what I did in the other van. This is a 04 road track here. But this inverter is not nearly big enough. Would be to plug this into here, have that on the batteries, and then this would be like your shore power that you're uh, plugging in. So, uh, sorry, that would be a yeah, it's a signal to your shore power, basically. So that's really not the way this is done. This is, whatever you're running is going to have to be plugged into here, or you can wire in a couple of receptacles in there. And that, uh, you won't be able to run the entire RV off of this. It's only a thousand watts, and it's not even a pure sine wave inverter.